Okay, this is going to be my review of the rares for the new Magic the Gathering expansion, Morning Tide. It's going to be hitting the streets in a couple weeks. Uh, let's see if there's anything playable. Okay, Annie Snitch. Uh, it seems he can't block, so I guess he's got to be a good attacker. Uh, kind of evasion does he have? Uh, pretty much nothing at all. Dies from Alana or Elf, George Skeleton. Uh, I guess you can bring him back to your hand once he's dead, because he's definitely going to die, because he sucks. Next up is Bitter Blossom. This one's getting some praise on the streets. I guess they think fairies are uh, possibly playable. I'm not really too sure about that. Uh, I also just noticed that uh, they're cutting the top and the bottom off of my images over here. Uh, I don't know what's going on with that, but I don't really care. So Bitter Blossom, you put a dude into play, you lose a life. I guess if you can gain some life and attack with some dudes, it might be okay. Alright, Earwig Squad, this is our release card. You'll be picking these up on the day the set comes out if you play. Uh, it's a pretty good dude. He's 5-3. Hopefully you'll get the Prowl cost off. Remove a couple cards from the deck. He's a pretty good guy. Hopefully he's not a late game top deck though, because otherwise he's a uh, mass of ghouls. Yeah, mass of ghouls. All tree folks basically assume that you have Doran in play, because otherwise they're pretty much unplayable. So this guy's basically a 5-5, five five, and uh, he can make two more 5-5s, five which is pretty good, uh, I guess. Marilyn of the Morn Song. People have been saying it's going to be good in a mystical teachings, blue-black control type of deck. Uh, it seems like it might be good. You have Teferi in play, flash him in, end of turn, tutor up counter spells, protect him forever, and I guess you just win. So uh, my friend has a foil one of those. You should trade for it real quick before you wise up and realize the card sucks. Okay, Mind Shatter, the new Mind Twist. Very nice. Uh, you're always, always going to be playing this card at least for 5 mana, because if you play it for 4, it's a really bad stupor, and if, if you play it for 3, it's a horrendous stupor. Uh, it might be pretty good. They're asking for about 10 bucks for it right now. I don't know if it's going to stay at that price. Probably not, but it's definitely not horrendous. Did you know Royal Assassin is in uh, Standard right now? No one plays that card, so why in the hell would you play this? I'm pretty sure it's good and limited. You just remove a changeling from the graveyard and bust everything, which can be quite heinous if it keeps active for a while. But how many changelings are you really going to have in your graveyard? I have to say, I was pretty interested in this guy as a late game finisher in a goblins deck, possibly, until I saw his art. And uh, basically, I don't even want to look at the card anymore. He looks like a catfish. Yeah, catfish. So this guy's a little bit too slow to be played and constructed unless you just want a 2-1 for 2. Uh, he probably is pretty decent in draft. He could always make a whole army of blocking 1-1 one, one goblin rogues. Uh, but then again, if you're playing in draft, you should have creatures with evasion. Because if you're just hoping to uh, smash in with huge creatures on the ground, you're probably not going to win. Uh, I'd be more afraid of uh, summon the school in draft than this guy because... Uh, merfolk at least have abilities that are pretty ridiculous, whereas goblins uh, just sort of stand there and do nothing. So those are uh, Black's rares for this set. I'm um, not too impressed. Uh, I mean, black's my favorite color in Magic, and seeing these rares, I mean, the the new Mind Twist is pretty cool, and Bitter Blossom, even though I ragged on it a little bit, is probably going to be interesting. Uh, even Stench Skipper, if I can get around that stupid-ass artwork, I'm probably going to pick him up just uh, for fun. But uh, I'm a little disappointed in black. I always expect more from my favorite color. Oh well. Uh, this card here I like a lot. Declaration of Nought. Uh, it's a pseudo meddling mage type counter spell. Uh, it's not seeing too much love right now. I was on Star City Games at the pre-order for it for like only about four dollars. I think it's definitely going to be a pretty popular card once people realize how uh, how good it is, especially against anything that plays red or black. You can't remove uh, enchantments or bounce them at all. So whatever your name is basically going to be there for the duration of the game. Something to look out for. The problem with Merfolk is that they all depend on each other. None of them really do anything by themselves, uh, which makes this one a bit of a problem. He has a really good ability, which could be used in some sort of a milling type deck, 
but without something to tap him, it's just going to be a waste. What are you going to attack into a 4-4 uh, four, four creature and just have him die, the mill four cards? You have to use a Drowner of Secrets or something else just to take uh, make use of his ability, possibly summon the school, but there's not too much otherwise really capitalized on that ability, which makes uh, what's basically one of Merfolk's main problems. By themselves, they do nothing, and you need a whole bunch of them to do anything whatsoever. If you're a fan of cards like Grinning Totem and Bribery, you're going to love Knowledge Exploitation. It has a game-breaking effect if it goes off, and the Prowl cost is almost uh, half the converted mana cost of the regular casting cost. Uh, people aren't going to be valuing very high. It looks like a dollar rare, a crap rare, and if you're one of the people that's really interested in the card, you'll be able to pick up four of them for very, very inexpensive. Definitely a cool card. So Mindspring has a lot of competition with other sorcery speed card drawing spells. I mean, would you want to cast uh, Tidings or Mindspring? Probably Tidings. Would you want to cast 4C or Mindspring for the same cost? Probably 4C. So I mean, it might be good if you're looking to draw a bulk amount of cards, but not being able to target your opponent means you can't really combo with it uh, if you want to deck them. So it might be playable, might not. We'll see. This card's pretty much the epitome of a win more card. I mean, if you're already attacking for five, and then you put five dudes into play, and then you take another turn, you're pretty much going to win the game. But if uh, you draw this card off the top of your deck, you don't have any creatures in play, uh, it might as well just be a land. Hey, you. Yeah, you. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking you're going to tap this dude, and the Stony Brook Schoolmaster, and then redirect the spell, then a token comes into play, then you're going to sack the token with your Void Mage Prodigy, and then the Void Mage Prodigy is going to counter the spell, and then you know what, that's a lot of setup, never mind. I like what Wizards just decided to do with these new Evoke costs. I mean, instead of just making this into a horrendous sorcery, they made it into a hill giant, and it might have an ability that does something. I mean, I don't know where these are really going to see play. It's like Windfall, except horrendous. I mean, it would probably be good in a Force Fruition deck of some sort. I mean, if you could flash it in somehow. Wow, Teferi, Force Fruition, Slither Moves. Sounds pretty good. I have to say, I love all these huge elementals that they've been putting out. Between this dude here and Nova Chaser, I mean, Leviathan has got stuff to worry about. He's no longer the big boy on the block, and you don't even have to sack 12 lands to make him attack. I mean, with Incandescent Soul Stoke, you pop this guy out, attack for 11, put out Nova Chaser, attack for 11, you should be dead. I mean, put in Slither Muse too, fuck it, he's an elemental. If you're one of those young fellas out there that loves hanging with the fairies, then the Vendillion Click is one of your new best friends. He's got Flash, so he could come in, remove that key piece of removal from the, your opponent's hand, which is definitely a plus, considering uh, Stiff Breeze kills the entire fairy team. But then again, with the ability on the stack, bang it a dang, Sulphur's Blast, yeah, you shouldn't be playing fairies. I have to say, I'm very happy with blue in this set. Both fairies and elementals got some big new men's that are pretty good. Uh, even the merfolk have some playable guys, technically, if you want to try and put the effort into it. And uh, Declaration of Naught seems to be a pretty good card. Uh, definitely try and pick them up. I think they're going to be good.